let's for tonight just open a brand new workflow and we're going to call this uh, nine pros workflow. And there we got, there we are. We start with this new workflow. I am, um, I'm here uh, maybe adding a, a CSV file here, an example that I have, which is their line data set. You may have seen this before. And we have many different columns here that we are importing in these CSV columns. And we can actually look at them really quickly and see that this table has around uh, uh, 30 columns, right? I can even write it here. These are flights. And we have all data about those flights, when they departed, when they were supposed to depart, what is the airline company, and, uh, and so on. Now, what's interesting here is that not all of these columns should go in in the analysis, especially if we want to uh, look at the uh, prediction of the delay for those flights, which this is the use case. Some of those columns have too many missing values too many constant values, too many unique values. So how do we get rid of some of those columns? Now, you are a 9 Pro, you joined the 9 Pro Learnathon, you know we have many nodes to do this. For example, we have the missing value column filter node, which we can use to get rid of uh, columns with, uh, let's say, at least 50% of missing values. These columns have too many missing values. Let's just get rid of them, shall we? And we can see right away that we got now to 29 columns. So that kind of reduced a bit the, the data set to 29 columns. And we can keep going like this. Another node I like a lot is called the constant value column filter node. And I can add it and still remove a few other columns, all the ones that are constant. I execute this time and we get to, let's see here, uh, 27 columns. So as you can see, this is how you're probably already friendly, how you clean your data in nine, getting rid of those columns that you don't need because it's dirty data and you just want to clean it, right? Now there is more stuff that you can do. For example, uh, with a simple column filter, you just uh, add uh, a column filter node and you use your domain expertise. So for example, uh, if you look here through these columns, you can see that uh, we want to look at the delay of those flights, but there's so many other measure of delays that we want to take out. So we can, for example, select all of those, select them out and go ahead with those nodes like this. And so at this point, we got to something like uh, 20 columns. And this can go ahead and ahead. For example, something that um, people like to do is to use correlation, right? For example, to use uh, linear correlation, and then after that, add a correlation filter to remove uh, columns that are highly correlated. The problem with building a workflow like this is that if you know what you're doing, it's super fast. But um, when you need to do this with a lot of different data sets, it can sort of take some time every time to find the right sequence of nodes, to change the settings, and uh, to also know those nodes. And let's, let me show you a way that could be much, much quicker uh, to reuse a workflow like this over and over again without having to build it every time from scratch. Yes, I'm talking about components, and I'm talking about a special one. So I'm going now here to open the 9 app. So I go to view. Uh, there is this... Uh, panel, which is um, in uh, uh, order, and then you write your hub. It should be open by default, but this way you do not miss it for sure. And when you open it, which is here on the side, you can look for interactive column filter, which is in the end what I would need to do this interactively in a faster way. I press enter, and it opens to me automatically the app, and this amazing interactive color filter. Monty, who is in your call, shows us an example here. And uh, this example is featuring a component, which has a really detailed description of what's happening here. And uh, we have even one CUDA here, and uh, we can actually um, uh, find it. Now, um, what's here interesting is that I can take this component and drag and drop it in my workflow and use it right away. So let me show you how that looks. I take this component here and I drag and drop it in my workflow. 
So I take the component and I'm now replacing all of those nodes with a single component that I need to configure first, tell me this is my target, the delayed columns. I open the interactive view and as this uh, component measure the correlation, how many missing values, how many uh, um, uh, unique values, how many uh, constant values, we have a dashboard they were able to use to quickly filter out based on all these metrics all the columns. So for example, here we have this relevance. The relevance is taking into account the biggest of those values, that is the percentage of uh, unique values, of constant value, missing values. So in this case, if I'm uh, leaving this uh, filter by default, I have year, which is always constant, or cancel in cancellation code, which is both all constant and here all, um, all missing. And then we have here, for example, another one, which is uh, uh, 93 percent. There is like here as 87 percent of uh, unique values. This is always unique to the different rows, these categorical values. So I can get rid of them simply by moving this to 50 percent. And then let's say that there is some uh, domain expertise that we need to apply interactively. Go through the columns and in a much nicer way than the column filter, I can uh, simply write in here delay and uh, take away all those features which are components of the delay. Another example is to write here time, and I can see here the departure time for those flights and what it was scheduled. The delay in the end is a difference between those two values. So if I want to predict delay, I cannot really add those features in my data set. I click close and apply, the component re-execute, and on the output, I can see that I filter quickly up to what is here, 11 columns in a single component. So as you can see, this is uh, nice also for the fact that always works, no matter which data set you're using, you have minor configuration to say, what is your target column? But also really important, you can package what is done in the interactive view in a single node. Let me show you. So here, if I wrote workflow executor and I add this node here, and then I go in the setting and click auto adjust ports, you can see that I created a node that is able to filter the data just the same. So here again, I filter the data, I execute this, and this is basically a way to reuse this column filter wherever I need. 